today I'm very excited and I'm honored. I have my Sifu here with me all the way from Portland coming to Vancouver. And today I want to kind of interview Sifu and for you to get to know a little bit about his background, also um, his brand, The Art of JKD, and, and a little bit about his history as well. So Sifu, how did you get into martial art? I was probably about 13 years old and m my father uh, worked in farm laboring, right, mm. at the time, and he saw an individual kick a peach off the tree, mm. okay, one of his one of his workers, and he goes, hey, you, you gotta teach my son, because he, <laughs> he knew I was looking for something that I needed to release whatever it was. We're getting into a little trouble? Is that well, <laughs> it, <laughs> well, you know what I mean, I mean, most people at that age, you, we try to figure out who we are, mm. and so I think I was trying to identify with something that um, I can express into, and mm. so, that uh, my teacher, uh, first kickboxing teacher I've had, it, he, he was from Mexico. Okay. And he had a, a really good way of putting me in, in line. In fact, he was like a father figure as well. Mm. Uh, but he took me on as a student, one of his personal students, and then he started bringing in people into the garage. You know, this is like the. Uh, underground stuff, you know, that you <laughs> So is he like see. working in the daytime and at nighttime you guys are like oh, punching and, and I, kicking and stuff? I would get I would get home with like bruises on my arms and, and legs and exhausted too. Mm. I mean you wouldn't believe how much training we did. I, you know, my face would sometimes bleed or kicks would come across my nose. At that time period yeah, he there was no legality issue at that time. It was he was from Mexico. Nobody even understands that stuff. <laughs> I mean, he just he, he's going to train you exactly the way he was taught. Mm. And he was one of those champions that, you know what, um, get up, fight, and go aggressive against the, the opponent. Mm. So I learned a lot from him. Mm. Um, during that time period, I did pick up uh, the Dao Jeet Kune Do. Mm. And just to see if I can have a you know, a different game in there, right? Because uh, every time I spar or at least fought somebody in that class, it, I was getting hammered. It, I mean, these guys had a lot of weight behind their punches. Was or that the, your first exposure to Bruce Lee or did you watch a movie or like how did you come across that book? Uh, Bruce Lee was really when I was younger. I mean, you'd see, they play the movies. Well, we play all, all the time. The time. Yeah. It was one of those yeah. uh, kung fu theater yeah. uh, moments. That time period, it was just always kung fu movies, and you'd always have a Bruce Lee movie right in the middle of those. Yeah. That inspired me, obviously, to, you know, as a little kid, like, do all these kicks yeah. and punches yeah. and yeah. stuff, run around and think you are Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you identify as, 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 as with, with his circumstances yeah. that was going on. I mean, I, I truly felt that it was something encouraging because um, where I lived was, I don't know, there's a lot of racism involved as well. So I, that identified with me as well, uh, being Hispanic and so forth. And then going back to um, my instructor, he was able to uh, teach me a lot about life and about how to fight. So um, at that point, you know, he had to move back. I had to continue my training. Mm. I still read the Tao. I was looking at other different martial arts. Um, and all those teachers that have taught me in the past, I really appreciated their time. Mm. Um, you know, whether it was a personal thing that they had to move on, and maybe they moved somewhere else, or, you know, things change. Mm. We all evolve into yeah. something else. And um, it wasn't up until I started training with Jerry that mm. it enlightened me. Mm. Jerry Poteet is one of uh, Bruce Lee's original students. Bruce Lee's yeah. original students. Um, the man was very serious too, and I, I related to that because my first teacher was pretty serious. Mm. You know, I had a lot of personal relationship with with my first instructor, but Jerry also had a personal relationship. But I related to that type of environment. Mm -hmm. um, you could say it's kind of old school. Mm. You know, it, it's like you show up on time, you. Uh, make sure you pay that respect in his home mm. and you listen to the man. Were okay. you training at his, where, at, the, at the time Jerry, did, did, did Jerry have a school or were you training at Jerry his? was always a, a, a private individual. It was, mm. He liked everything to be person, you know, private lessons only. Mm. He felt that he was able to um, increase your awareness mm. by making sure you're focused on, on the tools. Mm. 
And so um, there was a few questions I would ask, but they were always always related to how the structure was because that was important to me. Mm. It's like if he said he wanted to work on only two or three things, that's it. And I sit there and ask all these questions. Well, what if you know somebody you know grabs you yeah. from behind, or what if he grabbed yeah. you on the leg? What if? What if? What if? Yeah. Right. Those what if questions have to go away. You have to listen to how you build that structure mm. and, and that refinement that was very important to him so was um, that was Jerry uh, was Jerry is the one that took kind of take you, you took your skill to the whole new level I, I believe so well I'd go back home and train this stuff also mm -hmm. I mean you just have to continue. And Jerry passed away uh, when? passed away in 2012 2012 it, it you know for me to then you know you lose a mentor and you have to now continue on it's, it's it's quite difficult you always want to find somebody that can help you mm. right and the the thing is is it allowed me to do a lot more research on my own mm. okay um, you know look at it from different perspectives and um, maybe going back and reflecting to what I've learned and utilizing that um, you know there, there's a lot of experimenting involved and then uh, you know I still you need still need coaching mm. so right now um, you know, I'm currently with Steve Golden, mm. and he's able to at least take me to an area and say, okay, look at what you're doing, figure out how you can use your tools in this way, mm. and does it work for you, does it not? And there's a lot of experimenting there as well. So mm. it's good to always have a mentor mm. um, with you. Otherwise, you know, with, you're going to think of uh, your own ideas, you can't. You don't have all the answers. Yeah. Nobody right. does. Nobody yeah. does. Do you find that now with so much noise out there and people talk about JKD and you have like the original JKD, you have JKD concepts, you have JKD, like I, it is like now so many branches. And there's also a lot of gossip, a lot of like people talk about you, you're, you're good, you're no good, or I don't know. Like I, personally, I don't think it's the right thing to do because. Right. It's about, well, it's not what Bruce is about. Right. It's about the art, growing yourself, become a better version of yourself, expressing yeah. yourself. It's right. not a, like a piss match where you are no good. I'm Like, it's all ego-based, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's really a problem because then you're trying to crystallize what Jeet Kune Do is. And yeah. It is a method where you have to crystallize it. It's, it, it isn't that at all. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the problem that people are missing is their attitude. And their attitude is getting in their way. Yeah. Um, because even if you had individuals that have done this, they, I've seen Bruce Lee's, Bruce Lee's movies. I know how he moves. Yeah. I've done it since forever. Yeah. Oh, I know how to do nunchucks. Oh, yeah. I know yeah, how that, to that, do that's, this. That's JKD right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they know mm -hmm. what Jeet Kune Do is about. It just means that they've increased their awareness of what the art is. Yeah. But still, they got their character that they need to develop. They need to develop their ability to teach students, yep. the ability to really be the the, the mentor type. Mm. I mean, mm. that, that comes a long way. And how you teach people to stay out of situations where they don't need to be in. Yep. I mean, you know, I had this conversation the other day. I mean, you're gonna walk to an alley and you're gonna mind your own business and there's a group of individuals. And if you're gonna walk right through that, that might be a problem. You might have to go on the other side of the street and just keep on walking. Because you're avoiding situations like that. You don't need to be involved in them. Mm. There's a circumstance where somebody's yelling at you from across the distance, why would you engage that? Does yeah. it make any sense? Yeah. So you're making um, That's your situational awareness. Yeah. Right, right. You, you, you start utilizing that piece of the art, not uh, going in and how to kill somebody. That's not it at all. And then I think in some way, like why partially I want to make these type of videos is is because as you know, I'm not I don't, I'm not an instructor, right? It's just my passion, my hobby. I've learned from Sifu Tat Wong, learned from Sifu Octavio, I've learned a little bit from Joe Lewis. That it's just my passion, and I see so much, especially this kind of this story I've never shown on camera. I was watching some videos on YouTube mm -hmm. uh, about like some JKD guys in Taiwan, mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. I look at that, I was, I was just, I'm just pissed. Right, right, right. I'm like, what the hell is this? That's not what it is. And because there's no one kind of putting out content out there. Right. So, and I'm not saying like, we've got all the answers. I'm, at the best, 
we there's no way I could or anybody could I think could represent like JKD right so if you, it, it's at best it's one person's interpretation he's I think what I learned to my the best of my understanding ability and he's what I think it, it is right right nobody can say oh I I know what JKD is no you don't unless you're Bruce Lee nobody does nobody can say that Right. Well, I mean, there's, there's. Okay, so Bruce Lee left a lot of these, uh, his material behind, and yeah. this is what he's researched throughout the years. Yeah. Whether or not he taught students, we wouldn't know how nope. exactly he taught nope. them. But those students were able to at least mature what their understanding of, or what it was at the time, and mature their understanding of it. Mm. And whatever they understood at that time period, they took it to different levels. But then you have to realize that we all have uh, a body structure. Uh, we all have two legs, two arms, unless you know, you're handicapped or something. Mm -hmm. But how do we actually increase acceleration? It depends on that same structure. Um, I, a great friend of mine, he actually made the analogy of a ladder. The ladder is, the purpose of climbing it is to climb it. I mean, the, the structure of that ladder is the same on every single ladder, mm. you know? So if we can utilize that, the, the skeletal system, mm. how else are you going to develop power? It just depends on the timing, the rhythm, and how you're able to apply distance in it as well and apply the structure all at the same time. Mm. So there is a base structure. It's just going to be a little slightly different for each individual. Mm. Of course, it's always different, but the challenge is, is trying to show somebody how to do it mm -hmm. and then they may not understand how you're expressing it so it may be need to be heard from someone else from a different perspective yeah and then it clicks yeah. so that's and, and i think it's the whole the your journey of learning of discovering yourself don't be if you're a serious martial artist i think it's not very smart to come to your own conclusion or make your own judgment. You see a lot of that on YouTube, right? right? You watch one video, oh, that guy's not doing it right, or he should be this way, or that's wrong, or I could, I could take you on any time. It's all this stuff, right? Uh, versus, hey, you know what? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Let me try that. Oh, that's an interesting. Right. Uh, and you got to go a lot, lot of, a lot of depth to learn someone's art, right? It's not make your own judgment based on one video. It's like you, you look at a photo, oh, I know what that person is like, right. or I know his character. What do you know? You don't know anything, right? So I, that's not what we're talking about. So hopefully this interview gives you a little bit of insight. See if, if um, someone, let's say, the, I know you're based in Portland, uh, if someone wants to kind of get in touch with you and learn more about uh, your training or they want some private lessons, sure. what's the best way to do that? Uh, you can visit my website at theartofjkd.com. I'm also developing personal clients if you're willing to train in the warrior athlete system that develops your nutrition, your physical well-being, mentally, uh, the, everything that has to do with the art as well. I mean, we, we have this total package customized for your needs and you're able to actually improve yourself overall, not just Jeet Kune Do, but you're talking about your well-being, your, your, well -being. Well -being. your overall yeah. well-being. Yep, and I think uh, and see for Octavio here, we're going to be making a series of videos for you in the next coming weeks. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe below. Make sure you don't miss any videos. I think you'll love those videos. We're putting, we'll be putting a lot of work. And also check out our other GKD videos on this side as well. So stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Be water, my friend.